Hello and welcome to Hitchin Boys School BBC School Report. It's Thursday the 11th of March and I'm Remy. And I'm Alex. Today is top stories. It is claimed that Sayu Side, the five-year-old from Oldham in Greater Manchester who was kidnapped last week, has reportedly been found in Pakistan. A Punjab minister told Port that he had been handed over to his father, but there are no confirmed reports yet. We'll keep you updated as the story develops. Gordon Brown has announced a pay freeze on several professions. Judges, dentists and doctors were among those affected by the freeze. The plan is to save the government three and a half billion pounds in the next three years. However, this year MPs will still receive a 1.5% pay increase. British Airway cabin crew are likely to strike after the airline rejected peace proposals from the United Trades Union. BA stated that the union's suggestions fell significantly short of the 62.5 million savings they needed. The strike is likely to involve 13,500 cabin crew staff and affect over 800,000 passengers. We're now going to go over to our local presenter, Joe, and um, hear what's been going on in Hitchin. Hello, I'm Joe, and here are some stories in Hitchin. First up, we have a report on how the snow affected Hitchin, and especially Hitchin Boys School. Here's Jake and Cam with more information. In January this winter, Britain came to a standstill due to the big freeze. Thousands of schools were closed and hundreds of businesses were affected. It's not easy to decide whether to open or close a school, so we have come here today to interview Mr Wadsworth, head teacher of Hitchin Boys School, on why he decided to keep his school open. What is your opinion on schools closing in order to avoid affecting their attendance figures, which in turn might affect their officer rating? I can understand why schools might have thought about doing that. If a school is closed, then the students aren't expected to turn up, and therefore they're not absent. If a school decides to open, and lots of students can't get to school because they're snowed in or the transport's shut down or whatever, they will count as absences. And so that would affect a school's absence. How did you come to the decision about closing, closing and opening? To be honest, we keep an eye to the weather forecast all the way through, and the BBC's weather forecasters are telling us there's snow on the way. So we keep an eye to that. On the days when it looks as though snow might be a real problem, my deputy, Mr Booton, he lives in Letchworth, I live in Welling Garden, at around quarter past six in the morning, we phone each other. So one is in the north, one is in the south, we think we've pretty much got it covered. What you have to remember is we're making a decision based on is it possible and or safe for both staff and students to get to school. We interviewed Mr King, Associate Director of Mason of our Pledge. He stated that it is wrong that schools are closed at such short notice with no regards to what will happen to the children. He said the government didn't deal with the snow well and the council should buy the correct equipment for when it does snow because without it, businesses lose billions. On Tuesday the 9th of February, Dan Roro, a French actor, came into Hitchin Boys to perform to years seven and eight. Here's Tom with the rest of the details. Dan Roro est un monsieur qui aide à enseigner les gens dans leur langue en utilisant l'art dramatique. Monsieur Roro est né et élevé en France, mais plus tard, il allait à l'école en Inde et en Angleterre. À l'âge de 16 ans, il est devenu acteur et depuis sa jeunesse, il a voyagé autour du monde. Dan Roro a voulu devenir prof, ce qu'il a trouvé très utile pour ses spectacles, parce qu'il arrivait à engager et motiver les enfants plus facilement. Voilà quelques réponses de la part de trois garçons de l'année 8e. Bienvenue, on vient juste regarder un spectacle de Dan Roro. Maintenant, on va parler à Zander, Alex et Annie. Comment tu l'as trouvé How did you find it? I thought it was a really good experience. I thought everybody would take um, something from it. What did you think? I thought it was a spectacle learning and fun learning experience, and I really want more like this. Out. Um, well, I just found it, it was fun, it was just it's stupid but in a funny way, and uh, we were having fun, but at the same time, we were learning quite a bit. Thank you, Tom. And now for a sports story. Hitchin Boys School triumphed at the Lee Valley Indoor Athletic Centre. With two third places in the first two races, things weren't looking good for the team. However, with three first places in the 300 metres, the high jump and the shot put, the team were almost guaranteed victory. 
In the final relay, Hitchin boys tore apart the opposition to take first position and a place in the regional finals. And finally, Hitchin Boys School head teacher Keith Wadsworth has recently announced his retirement after an eventful 11 year tenure at this school. Mr Wadsworth started at the school in 1999, his goals being to preserve the school's traditional aspects whilst moving forward in terms of technology and language specialism. As we speak, the school is interviewing candidates for the new headship post. We hope that Mr Wadsworth's success will pass on to the next head teacher and that he has a relaxing and enjoyable retirement. Back to you, Remy. Thank you very much, Jo. Now over to Callum for the weather. Hello and welcome to the weather with me, Callum. Now, as you can see here, it's going to have quite a misty start in the morning here in the south. But as the day goes on, this will disappear. It's going to be quite stable as well, but we still have this northeasterly wind coming in which means that even though it is seven, it will feel a lot chillier. Everything is about to change, however, because of this band of rain up here in northern Scotland. As the day goes on, this will move further south. Temperatures are around seven and eight, with highs of 10 in Aberdeen. So overall today, it's going to be quite sunny with most of the rain here in Scotland. You won't see too much frost tonight, but you might see a bit because the temperature will get down to about two degrees, but we hope you won't have to scrape the frost off your car. Now, as for tomorrow, that rain we talked about earlier, well, by tomorrow morning, this will be all the way down here in the south, and it will leave lots of showers behind it. Now up here in Scotland, where the rain was earlier, we're going to have we're going to see a lot more sun. But you might still see a few showers. Temperatures are still around seven and eight, but the temperature in Aberdeen will drop from ten to around six. So as for tomorrow, the weather there will be the chance of showers almost anywhere but the brightest parts of the country are in central Scotland and Wales. Now, if you're wondering what the weather's going to be like in Hitchin at the weekend, I can tell you. On Saturday, the temperatures will be about 10 degrees and there'll be a lot of sun. However, on Sunday, there's going to be a few showers. So this weekend, it's going to look a lot more like spring. That's Callum reporting for BBC School Report Weather. Thanks. Now for a look at today's papers. On the front of the Telegraph, um, headline is a fifth Labour MP to face police probe into expenses. Basically, Harry Cohen, uh, Labour MP, has been, has been uh, under a police investigation for renting out his main property and claiming, apparently claiming, £70,000 of taxpayers' money for a second home. And on The Independent, they have an exclusive interview with Nick Clegg, who explains his decision between the Labour and the Tories in the obviously confused Parliament. On the front of the Mail today, um, a story which has been going around a lot about the new 10% death tax. Basically, the middle class will have to pay 10% of their earnings to help support the elderly. On the Daily Express, it's exactly the same as the Daily Mail. It's all about the death tax here. And a different story on the Times about how judges fear that prisons be will become overpopulated due to new legislation given by the government. And finally, a pair of Salford University students, Faisal Moyad Din and Mohammed Azim, sustained a 24 hours and 17 minutes hug, beating the previous record by 16 minutes. The two said that they were over the moon to have beaten the record. They raised money for the Christie Cancer Unit and the pair say that they will have another go to prevent the killer disease. We're Hitchin Boys School reporting for BBC School Report. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.